So let's talk about uh, different marks that you can make on a surface. We're going to be using graphite, but you can use other materials to make these marks. Um, but when you're applying graphite marks, there's a couple uh, different ways that you can do that. Um, you're probably familiar with the blended um, mark, meaning you put the graphite down and then you blend it out. And a lot of times you can use a blending stump so that all of the um, values are evenly blended. There is a hatch mark. This is talking about lines going, um, lines being created in the same direction. When those lines start to crisscross in different directions over top of each other, they're known as a cross hatch. A series of dots, so instead of little lines, you're applying the value with little dots um, in a stipple pattern. Um, then we have in more, a little bit irregular, but think of it like scribbles, uh, they call it a scrumble. So let's see what that looks like. Um, you're gonna have a chance to practice all five of these, applying it to a object such as a sphere which starts out as a circle, but once the value is added to it, it will look more three-dimensional. And then to start with, a value scale is showing a step-by-step -step as it gets lighter and then goes darker. So applying this mark, like I said, a hatch mark, so we'll start with that one, we're talking about lines going in the same direction. So if this is going to be my lightest value, you wanna make sure that you're at least using a 2B pencil, so something really, really light. Now, as you're making these marks going in the same direction to create the illusion that it's lighter, um, you have to think about the pressure that you're making with the pencil and the space in between each mark. So if this is a really light value, we're probably going to see quite a bit of space in between these lines going in the same direction. As you get over to the next space, it should be getting um, a little bit darker. So my lines, they the line could get longer, that's one way to do it, and also um, putting them closer together. Then you can also start applying more pressure to your pencil mark. You can also switch to a 4B pencil. adding the pencil marks here. And gradually getting darker. Now it's okay for you to go back. You could apply some of the lines and realize, hey, this needed to be lighter or darker, um, but I'm just gonna cr gradually um, add these hatch marks. And I'll come back, instead of making you watch me do the whole value scale, we'll come back to it. Um, but just explaining the process so that when you try it yourself, maybe that helps a little bit. So um, we'll come back to this, but just to kind of give you an example of each one, we talked about the crosshatch uh, mark. So we're talking about lines going um, in two different directions. So just like before, um, a crosshatch mark and this is actually pretty dark. Probably should have applied that. But I wanted to show you the, the mark, but probably should have applied it more to the second one. So maybe I start out like I did in the other one with my lines going in the same direction, and then I start to go the opposite way. If we look at some of the other marks, so we have hatching, cross hatching, stippling, so a series of dots, starting in the second one, just so I can show you enough. So your dots can be um, further, you know, to get darker, you can put them closer together. Maybe they become a little bit bigger. Um, but that would be stippling, scumbling, a, a, a scrumble, a scumble, think of it like scribbles.
and then blend it. This is where you can use a blending, uh, a blender to sort of seam the physical marks, the lines that you're making become blended out so sometimes to help them evenly blend you can I use the um, cross hatching a lot more and then I take my blender and try and mix them all together so I'm not seeing the mark anymore And if this gets too dark, let me go ahead and show you that. Like looking at this, that's a big jump from really light to um, like a light gray. Let's say I went a little too far. What's cool is you can use your uh, kneaded eraser to kind of pick some of that up. And if your blending stump is already used, sometimes you don't even have to put any graphite down. You can just add the graphite using your blender. This is gonna be known as your highlighted area. So this is the lightest part of the sphere. And as that um, light is fading around the object, you're gonna notice that it's rounded. If you add the value flat across, it's going to flatten um, the illusion and you're not it's not going to look like a sphere. So um, as that light fades, it should be fading in a rounded, it should fade thinking of it more rounded as it wraps around. So here's going to be my lightest point. So I'm just adding a little bit with my 2B pencil. Um, and I'm thinking of a hatch mark. So it's okay to add a few lines to, sh to just mark where uh, the values are gonna go. But I did get a little bit heavy there, forgetting for a minute there that I'm working with the hatch marks. Um, but as you're applying the hatching, you're going to keep these lines going in the same direction. So as it's getting darker and darker, I'm going to start putting these lines closer together and apply a little more pressure with the pencil. Instead of applying more pressure, I can also switch to a different uh, graphite pencil. Instead of the 2B, you can move to like a 4 or 6B. It's a lot easier to always get darker than it is to lighten it. Um, so I just try to keep it really gradual. I'm gonna kind of demonstrate this one, but then I'm going to go a little bit faster with the other examples. That way you can see. Either that, I think I may swi switch to a, a time-lapse video. I'm just starting to make the lines a little bit darker. I'm gonna switch over to my 4B pencil. And as you can see the lead, this naturally should start appearing darker. And the great thing about these marks that I'm now teaching you, uh, once you understand how they work, what's great is you can use them a lot for textures. Meaning if I was trying to draw something that maybe had fur or little spikes, I could create a hatching technique. Like I said, it's also um, really useful for um, eventually blending, getting the graphite on the paper and then blending it out if you want to give it a little bit of a texture mark or just some variety with your lines you can use any of these marks I've used them with um, the graphite pencils like I'm showing you I've used it with pen and ink so using an ink tool could be in a form of a pen or where you dip um, a pen nib into ink so there's lots of different mediums that you can do this with even with a paintbrush and paint I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a 6B pencil. Feel free to sharpen these as needed. Keep in mind that the lead is really delicate, so I always use a handheld sharpener. 
to sharpen pencils. As I get closer to the edge, I'm going to leave a little bit of that highlight area, which is known as the reflective light. And it'll divide up the space between the shadow edge and the cast shadow. Otherwise, they just kind of end up transitioning into like this blob of value. And it's actually there. You know, I showed you all that in the previous uh, videos that there is reflective light there but it's also a great way to break up that space so it doesn't just turn into a big blob. So as the cast shadow is around, so the cast shadow is going to be in the opposite side of the light source. So if my light source is coming from the top left side, on the opposite side, this is where we're gonna see that cast shadow. It's going to be darker, especially the closer I get to the sphere. It's going to fade out just a little bit. Okay. If I felt like I got too dark too quickly, I can also go back with my uh, kneaded eraser and pull some of that up. But you can also go back with your pencils and darken an area if you notice that it uh, doesn't have that gradual fade. Okay, let's talk about some of the other areas. I'm going to give you guys a chance to work and um, just kind of show you what I have after I've spent a little bit of time working on them. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the technique now that I have finished my drawing assignment, uh, the practice with applying value. I have my five value scales and my five spheres. Um, each one has a different mark, hatch, crosshatch, stipple, scumble, and blended. And just as a reminder of some of the things that I did to get this gradual from light to dark, um, I used my 2B pencil. Um, and this kind of goes for all of these. Um, I started with my 2B pencil and I kept more space in between the line or um, mark that I was making on the paper. As I started to get further down, I started adding in my 4B. By the time I got to this, section here I was working with my 6B pencil and then my 8B. You may notice that you some students will have a 9B pencil. Um, you know they're around the same that's why I always kind of skip numbers because they're just uh, you know very close in value. Same thing adding more space in between my marks as well as applying a little bit more pressure but a lot of times I just depend on changing the graphite pencil. It's just naturally getting darker. For example, this stippling, my dots started to get a little bit bigger, closer together. My scribble marks, also called scumble. Um, scribbles getting closer together. And then I used my blending stump um, to get this gradual um, blended fade of, your, uh, of my value. When adding to the sphere, remember you want to keep it rounded. I gave you all a handout. And on the back of it, so this was um, what we started with. And this should have been a little bit more of a gray. So seeing that blended value fade from light to dark, 
what it would look like sitting on a surface up against um, a background. But on the back, it's just showing you how that light will fade with the form of the object. So because the sphere is round, we're seeing the values um, start back up at the top and just kind of round out. Um, so hopefully this might be helpful. You don't need to fill this out, um, but it's there as like a reference to show you if you're thinking about numbers or just this light from dark, how that fades um, around the object. Right now we're just starting with the sphere. We'll get to some of these um, coming up. I look forward to seeing how you all uh, worked through this assignment. See how it goes, take your time. And um, one little advice for right here at the end, as you're applying value, I'm right-handed, so not going from left to right made it a little difficult not to smear my work. So I kept a cover sheet um, to keep me from blending and smearing all of my other work.